Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Kate Hetherington, president of Howard Community College. Thanks for joining us in what will be an entertaining and informative presentation celebrating the college's 50th anniversary. HCC opened its doors for the first day of classes on October 12, 1970, with a two-story building that housed all classrooms, labs, offices, and the cafeteria. At times, cows from a neighboring farm even wandered onto campus. Now, after 50 years, the fields on which the cows used to roam have been replaced with 14 buildings that encompass state-of-the-art academic facilities, a visual and performing arts center, athletic fields, and more. We've come a long way since 1970. HCC offers associate degree and certificate programs, as well as workforce development training and continuing education classes to more than 26,000 credit and non-credit students each year. To kick off tonight's lecture, I would like to share a celebratory video that looks at images from 50 years and voices from all four of HCC's presidents. Immediately afterwards, Dr. Rosemary Williams will follow with tonight's lecture, ending with a panel discussion and Q&A period. Enjoy. Thought it'd be a wonderful idea to come here and start a new community college based on this new planned city of Columbia. So we really wanted to create this community of learning that would enable students to have a, an outstanding collegiate experience close to home at a price they could afford. There's a culture here that supports innovation and change. The ideas are free-flowing and that makes it an exciting place to be. The most important thing at HCC are the people who work here. They want to make sure that we do the best for our students in meeting our mission, providing pathways to success. Williams, Associate Professor of History here at HCC. When I set out to write the latest volume of the History of the College for the College's 50th anniversary, I took over the unofficial title of College Historian from my colleague Vlad Marinich. Vlad is one of our founding faculty and he had written the History of the College from 1970 till 2012. If you'd like to know more, the History of the College is available on the College website. Today I would like to just talk briefly about some of the major events in the history of the college over the last 50 years. HCC opened its doors on October the 12th, 1970. The opening was somewhat delayed and the weekend before the college opened it was a scramble to get everything ready. Faculty, staff and students all pitched in to clean up, set out the furniture and get everything ready for the first students that day. The 594 students arriving for the first day would have had no problem navigating around campus. Everything was just in one building, which is today's Clark Library. It had the classrooms, the faculty administrative offices, the library, the science labs, and even a cafeteria, or at least a room with some tables and some vending machines. HCC was built as part of a great boom in the growth of community colleges. The post-war baby boom had led to a surge in community college enrollment 
in the 1960s and early 1970s. At its peak, one new community college was opening each week somewhere in the country. Before HCC opened, most students in Howard County went to Catonsville Community College. When Howard County leaders decided to build a community college to serve the county, it was a natural fit that would be built in the new city of Columbia. The planned city of Columbia had been built just a few years earlier in 1967. The brainchild of urban planner and social visionary James Rouse. Rouse's vision was to create a diverse and integrated city which would provide jobs, housing, education, culture, and above all, a sense of community. It would be, in Rouse's words, a garden for growing people with green spaces, parks, and trails. James Rouse said, an inspired, concerned, and loving society will dignify man, will find the ways to develop his talent, will put the fruits of his labor and intellect to effective use, will achieve brotherhood, eliminate bigotry and intolerance, seek the truth and communicate it, respect differences among man. HCC fits well with Rouse's vision. It serves not just its students, but the wider community. Through its community partnerships, it provides employers with the skilled workers of tomorrow. It enriches the lives of those in the community with its continuing education and kids' summer programs. And HCC is a cultural gem in Howard County, with the Horowitz Center for the Performing Arts, the Rep Stage Productions, and its wealth of cultural events. This is best illustrated by a story psychology professor Peggy Armitage told me in an interview in 2017. She was visiting Florida, taking a guided tour of a local attraction, when she struck up a conversation with another couple on the tour. They were surprised to discover that they all came from Colombia. When the couple found that Peggy worked at HCC, the recognition was immediate. HCC is the reason they would never leave Colombia, they said explaining how much they enjoyed all the theater, arts, and music programs, and adding that it made living in Colombia feel like living in a college town. Over its first 50 years, HCC has experienced huge changes. The campus would hardly be recognizable to anyone who'd last seen it in the 1970s. From one building, the campus has expanded rapidly. The parking lot has been replaced by a quad and the gleaming new structures, such as the state-of-the-art health sciences and SET buildings, reflect the expansion of programs and opportunities available at the college. Many of the changes we see in the first 50 years reflect major social changes that have taken place. One example is the social revolution in the role of women that has taken place over 50 years. It is no coincidence that the first two HCC presidents were men and the next two have been women. Former Board of Trustees Chair Kevin Doyle described HCC in 2020 as a female-driven institution. Society has also experienced a technological revolution since 1970. In the 1970s, the college offered secretarial courses. Today, it offers cyber security. In 1970, students lined up outside to register for classes. Today, students can regi register for classes on their mobile phones. Another area of change has been the increasing awareness of climate change and emphasis on sustainability in the last 50 years. At HCC, this has been reflected in a variety of green initiatives. We see it in the landscaping on campus, the rain gardens, stream preservation, native plantings, green spaces, and green certified buildings. Many of these efforts have been led by Bob Marietta, known on campus as Sustainable Bob. Since 1970, the makeup and needs of HCC students has also changed. On average, students at HCC are more diverse, representing 106 different countries, and also younger today than they were in the 1970s, when there were fewer students right out of high school, and many students were Vietnam veterans or adults restarting their careers. 
Amidst these changes, many priorities and values have remained constant, reflecting the culture of the college since its founding. HCC continues to be student-centered, data-driven, and committed to innovation and excellence. The college has also remained committed to building a sense of community for its students. In a 2019 interview, Dr. Hetherington said, when I first came to campus, I was struck by the fact that people were extremely friendly. People wanted to help. The culture here is one that's focusing on the needs of others. As president, I want to ensure that we have a welcoming and supportive environment. 2020 did not prove to be a great year to celebrate the college's birthday. In fact, the past year was probably the most challenging in the college's history. As happened to many of us this last year, plans for gathering the community together, together for picnics and cake had to be replaced with celebrations on Zoom. However, even though we can't all be together to celebrate, I wanted to take this opportunity to recognize all those people who, over the past 50 years, have committed so much of their time, energies, expertise, and passion to build the college that we have today. Our dedicated faculty, and here you may recognize uh, some members of today's panel, uh, Pam Cornell and Vlad Marinich. Our exceptional staff, administrators, and trustees, our generous donors and community supporters, and of course, our wonderful students, whose success gives meaning to all of our work over the past 50 years, and whose dreams will continue to inspire us into the future. Thank you for joining us today to celebrate the college's first 50 years. Welcome and good evening. Good evening to our panel discussion. Uh, my name is Brian Coomer. I am the Special Collections Librarian here, and I'm, I'm also the archivist for the college. This evening, we have a wonderful panel discussion, uh, and this panel will be part of our question and answer period. Feel free to submit your questions now, and at any time during the panel discussion, the questions will be moderated. We are pleased to have a panel of distinguished HCC retirees and alumna to share their reflections on the daily life over HCC in the last 50 years. I'd like to begin by introducing them all to you. First, I'd like to introduce Dr. Pam Cornell. Dr. Cornell has served for 50, 40 years at HCC, Director of Admissions, and then Executive Assistant to the uh, Executive Associate to the President. She's a full professor and director of the Silas, Cla Silas Craft Collegians Program. And she initiated the first scholarship program at HCC, the first honors recognition program, the first high school dual enroll program, and secured funding for the ST and SA buildings. She was also a Middle States evaluator for several other community college, authored a supplementary classroom textbook on cultural diversity in the classroom. Welcome, Dr. Cornell. We also have Gian Ginella Garrett, who graduated from Howard Community College's second graduating class in 1973. She went on to receive her BA in journalism from Boston University and her MS from Baruch University in New York City, where she lives. She's a project manager and business analyst in the fine tech industry. On the side, she is a fervent traveler. Her African American and Italian heritage have served, have inspired her to frequent trips to Italy and the African continent. She writes about travel, conservation, and culture for multiple publications. Next, we also have Dr. Quint Cardos. Quentin Cardos was director of AV services at Howard Community College from 1972 to 2010. His education included a BFA in photo illustration from RIT in 1967 and a master's of science in education from NIU in 1972. Throughout his tenure at HCC, he was involved in the gradual transition of educational AV resources from analog to digital technology from the 1970s to the 2000s. Now retired, 
Quentin enjoys his time with his wife and family and continues to his involvement in technology, creating, digitizing, archiving, and organizing documents and photos from his family history. We also have this evening, Doc, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Vlad Marinich, Professor Emeritus. He was the first full-time faculty to be hired at HCC. He retired as a professor of history. He's a published author in Russian history and has, I hear, another book in publication at the moment. Welcome to all of you this, this evening. Our panel begins uh, with an examination or uh, with a we have uh, some questions prepared, and we also have some photos to look at that come directly from the HCC's uh, 50th anniversary gallery exhibition. Uh, I would encourage all of you, if you have a moment, to uh, navigate to HCC website, and at the Horowitz Center, you will find a link for that uh, gallery, and the photos we are looking at tonight are a sample from those to help us prompt some discussion if need be. Uh, if we would like to, if we, uh, if we could begin by uh, showing the first uh, first image, I have some questions I'd like to pose to our panelists. I would encourage uh, anyone to, uh, uh, to jump in, but uh, I will start off by just asking this specific question. Um, when you first arrived to work or take classes at HCC, whichever, what were your feelings? This picture here is from the first registration. It's Slayton House. This was uh, this was uh, the first time students registered for classes uh, on, for for uh, for degrees programs at HCC. Um, I'd like to throw this first to uh, Vlad, being one of the first uh, faculty hires, and uh, and then maybe we could get uh, Janella as an early uh, student to also give an impression from the other side, uh, if you could. Each take in turn. If Vlad, you could start and talk about what it was like. What were the excitements? What were the challenges that uh, you came across uh, in the first years at HCC? Well, well, first of all, it was incredibly exciting because, of course, it was uh, a brand new college, and you know, just to see uh, the students uh, registering. So. Uh, for me, it was an exciting. It was an exciting time, and whatever problems arose, I thought like, okay, well, we can solve them, and so on and so forth. Okay. However, in retrospect, fifty years later, uh, everything was punch cards, and the students had to pick up a punch card for the class that they were taking, and then they had to get, hand it to some other person who was doing it. So um, I think, from a student's perspective, there might have been some frustration. But I thought it was great. <laughs> Janelle, your turn. Uh, yes, I have fond memories. I was just coming from high school. So uh, for me, the, um, the freedom of college, um, a campus, even though it was much smaller than it is now with one building, was exciting. Um, selecting classes, having professors like uh, Professor Marinich, um, who knew so much about his subject, uh, was, was just fascinating. And um, yeah, having a multiplicity of ages, you know, high school was just uh, 16, 17, 18 year olds, but to go to college and be with people my age, but people who were older to get that, those different opinions really meant a lot. Um, and there was, like Vlad said, a, a vibrancy. It was a new school. It, it felt like we were pioneers. You know, processes and procedures were just beginning to get established. We're hardly so we felt as if we were part of creating this institution. Uh, Quentin, you were also very early on in the uh, history of the college. You were uh, here. Uh, what was it like for you starting out? Uh, at HCC? Well, uh, it was a little different. The, the day of my interview was when the Hurricane Agnes hit in 1972. And uh, it was raining like crazy. And uh, my wife and I had gone down to the Kennedy Center and kind of drove through deep water to get out of uh, DC up to Maryland. 
uh, this was after my interview, but once I started, which was another month or so, it was all new and different to me because I was teaching uh, grade school in the Midwest in Rockford, Illinois. So that was kind of a culture shock in a way to go from grade school environment to a uh, college environment. But I liked it and I was able to jump right into the technology and working with the faculty um, on all those kinds of things. So, you know, it was a, it was a great opportunity. Uh, Dr. Cornell, I have a question for you, uh, semi-related. Um, uh, because uh, when I was reading your bio, uh, you've had many roles on campus. And one of the questions I had for the panel, I'd like to start with you, is what was your main role on campus? And uh, one of the wonderful things about HCC is that people seem to really want to stick around when they work here. Uh, it's a great environment to work and people's careers evolve over time. Uh, and uh, I think that's a wonderful thing about the culture of the campus. And you've had an amazing transformation over your career. And if I was wondering if you could maybe speak a little bit into that and what, how that happened for you and what was it about the culture that allowed it and um, how that helped shape your career. Okay, sure. Um, I came in 1978. I remember my interview was literally all day long because students were still being sent to Cadenceville Community College. And my main charge was increase enrollment, specifically high school enrollment. And so it was just a wonderful time to be able to be creative. I was, gave, I was given four carte blanche to do whatever I needed to do to increase the enrollment. Um, I had a lot of firsts, which I enjoy program development. So as I mentioned, I did a lot of first programs. Uh, the college was always so supportive. Dr. Smith was then the, the uh, president. So he and the board of trustees all helped and supported and allowed me to do the things I needed to do just to increase the enrollment because that was the main, that was just the main charge at that time. And another thing I always appreciated about the college was that when I felt like I had mastered a particular job task, all I had to do was ask and it was granted. I was able to either take on new tasks or uh, new positions so that I could further grow and develop as a person and uh, continue to enjoy my time at the college. And it's mostly been because everybody's just been so supportive and allow me to do so many things. And that's probably my biggest, um, the thing that I'm most happiest about being at HCC for 40 years. And of course, at the time I came, everybody was young. We did a lot of activities together and a lot of fun times. Everybody worked hard, uh, which was a good thing because it was just what you're excited. Excellent. <clears throat> um, before we uh, go on any further, I just want to remind our audience tonight that you do have an opportunity to chat some questions. And I'd like to introduce, uh, you won't see her on camera possibly, but I'd like to introduce um, our, our, uh, our person running that, which is Elizabeth Homan. She's the Executive Director of Public Relations and Marketing, and she'll be moderating the questions this evening. So please feel free to ask any questions of our panelists as we go on. Uh, before, uh, before the next question, can we put up the next slide, uh, the next image? Okay. This is an older classroom. This is from uh, 1979, and we have it in the archives titled The View of Secretarial, Secretarial Science Classroom with Students. Uh, uh, not a, a, a blast from the past uh, kind of picture of what it was like to uh, study in secretarial sciences. Uh, what are some of the memories of students and the different programs uh, that have come and gone over, over the time? Uh, I would like to throw that out to um, someone. Uh, let's see. Let's throw that out to Quentin uh, as our as the photographer for many years. And by the way, thank you for leaving the archives with such a rich uh, uh, um, gallery uh, and available materials for for such events as this. 
Uh, but I was wondering if you'd like to speak to that and how you saw the campus change as programs came and went. Okay. Yes, it was um, it was ty uh, typewriters and no word processors even. And um, I can't remember the lady that direct. There was two people. Vlad maybe remember. Uh, two people directed the secretarial science program, but I guess as technology and occupations evolved, that I think they eventually phased it out. But it was in the what we call the L building. I'm not sure what that's called now. Uh, Rouse Rouse building. I'm not sure. Uh, under the library. I worked out of the library in the audiovisual area. So that was kind of the focal point of the college when it was one building. So it was kind of interesting to um, be in contact with everybody, no matter uh, what their job was or their position at the college from the president down to whoever worked in plant operations. Um, as far as the program goes, I, uh, I'm not sure exactly how that evolved, but that was pre-computer days. And I think they had IBM typewriters. <laughs> so anybody else would like to weigh in? Uh, maybe from the student perspective, Janella, uh, what did you see? Sure. What do you remember sure, as being a yeah. student? <laughs> well, I was um, involved in um, the, the newspaper, which was a lot of fun and um, also took pre-calculus and uh, I remember Virginia Kirk um, uh, in English, um, you know, so many fine teachers. And one of the most exciting parts of the two years I spent at Howard Community College was a trip that um, that Mr. Mr. Marinich, Professor Marinich, um, organized to Russia. And um, it was truly outstanding. We opened it up to the community. I forget exactly how many of us there were, but it was a small group. And um, we went to Moscow and um, I believe to, um, to St. Petersburg and to uh, and ended before coming back in Helsinki. And it was just uh, the most memorable trip of my life. And it, it was part of a, um, of a class that he was giving in Russian history. So it had all the allure of, uh, of education and of travel and of uh, just, it was an exciting time politically to be going to Russia. This would have been like 1971. So um, there was all sorts of things going on in, in the relationship between the United States and Russia at that time. So it was one of the highlights of my entire stay there. Excellent. Um, I understand there's been a couple of comments or questions that have rolled in. Uh, Beth, are you able to maybe share one of those with the panel? Sure, I'm happy to do so. I'm going to kick off with the first one that came in here and share that so people can see it on the screen. Um, it may be that our panelists wouldn't, won't be able to see it, but I do want to share what it says. It says, this is to Pam, Vlad, and Quint from Johnny B. I miss you. Come back, please. <laughs> How much do you miss our wonderful college? So there is a question there. He does want to know how much you miss our wonderful college. So I will toss it to the panelists and ask, um, you know, for, for you that are in retirement, um, how, what is the difference in transitioning away from working and being such a part of the college for so long? Um, what's it like? Do you miss the college? I've been uh, retired for uh, uh, eight years, okay? And uh, uh, I was at the college for 42 and a half years. And I, uh, when I used to get up in the morning, I wash up, uh, you know, have my uh, coffee, breakfast, whatever else, get dressed. And I would tell my wife, I'm going to school. I never used the word work. Uh, I miss the place every single day. However, I recognize that uh, I retired when I should have retired uh, to, make, to make room for uh, younger people uh, who frankly had probably a heck of a lot more ability than uh, I ever had.
I miss John Thanks, Bauman. Bob. I could take a class from him right now in economics <laughs> in today's world. I too miss and he, the college. By the way, yeah, yeah. Uh, jo John Bauman has been at the college uh, many years and uh, innovative, incredibly uh, competent, and his students uh, adore him. Dr. Cornell, I thought were you, were you going to make a comment? I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say I too miss the college. I'm enjoying my retirement, as I should, because I did plan adequately for it. But HCC has just always been such an incredible place to work, which is why I stayed. Although I was courted sometimes to leave, I just could not because uh, the people that I worked with have always been so supportive, and we've enjoyed each other and. The students, I really, I really have enjoyed working with the students. So, yes, Johnny, I miss it tremendously. Uh, I won't be coming back, but I do miss it tremendously. <laughs> so, Brian, I do uh, that, have some additional yes. questions. Yeah, I will Excellent. go ahead and ask some of these um, and some comments. So, we've had some um, vibrant comments coming in of people who are just really happy to see the panel um, and to reconnect and reminisce about the past 50 years. So I want to toss one out here that just came in from Janelle Broderick, which I think this is a really lovely question. I wanted to make sure we asked that tonight. So I'm going to begin by asking this question of Quint. And then if the others want to chime in, that would be great too. But Janelle's question is, what advice would you give to HCC pioneers of the next 50 years? Ooh. Advice? I know it's a it's a good one. <laughs> it is. So Take Quint, it. do you want to start? Now Janelle. That? Sure. Janelle was in theater, I think, or fine arts. Is that right? Um, yeah. Yeah, I would say uh, take it as it comes, because you never know how things are going to evolve. I mean, just look at this year. Is one is an example of what's happened. It's been crazy, crazy world, if not crazy country. Um, you got to be able to kind of roll, adapt to new situations. Um, that's that's kind of my immediate impression. You know, I, would I was also thinking. Add, I'm sorry. Oh, Go ahead, I was thinking how the college has always been very innovative, very creative. Our leaders have always been such. So I would say, stay on the breast of everything. Uh, always have your creative side turned on, your innovative side turned on. Uh, who would have expected all the things that happened this last year? But HCC has been able to rise to the charge once again. So just always tune in to your creativity and your innovation. I, I would just like to piggyback onto that and say that um, uh, however long the, fi the next 50 years take, uh, always remember that we are here for the students, uh, you know, not, not to profess our knowledge, but to manage the student learning process so that when the students leave here, they're a heck of a lot better uh, than, well, than uh, when, when they arrived. That is beautifully said, Vlad, beautifully said. I wanna share a few more comments, if you don't mind. I did wanna let you all know that Johnny B chimed back in after hearing your responses to his question. And he wanted to let you all know, thank you so much, Pam, Quint, and Vlad, you are the best. So wanted to share his thoughts. I wanted to toss to another question. This one comes in from Karen Badnay, and she is from Dragon Digital Media. And she wanted to know, how would you describe the culture of the college over, over the years? So I wanted to begin with Janella and ask, as a student, what you saw the, as what the culture was like at Howard Community College. Um, what was it like experiencing the college as a student and how it maybe even shifted and changed from when you started to when you graduated? 
Sure. It was so warm and embracing. Um, I was not ready to go uh, to a, a large school or out of state. Um, but as, as Vlad mentioned, um, it really did change me and it prepared me to eventually go to uh, transfer to Boston University, which uh, is quite a, a, a difference. But um, the kind of support and encouragement that I received at, at HCC really matured me and really uh, grew my confidence so that I was able to make that very you know, wide, large change. Vlad, Quint, or Pam, do you have any other thoughts about the culture and what, what you saw as an employee and ha perhaps how it shifted in the time you were there at the college over your well, the, decades? Yeah, sure, sure. The, the, uh, the, the early years, okay, uh, and uh, Jan Janelle is, you know, an example of those, er of, of the early years, okay, uh, and uh, we had student populations that included veterans. Uh, as a matter of fact, we had to create a position, Director of Veterans Affairs. Uh, we had lots of returning housewives. And uh, so you had a mix of uh, the recently out of high school uh, students with people who came back from having been on battlefields to uh, women uh, who had raised families and now were ready to go back to get a degree or to be trained to get some kind of a job or other. So it was a very, very mixed group. And that continued for uh, a, a number of years. And uh, we were not as culturally, ethnically diverse uh, as, as we are entering uh, uh, when we entered the 21st century. I will say, Vlad, it was almost as if you read the next question I was going to ask. Um, this one came in from Sarah English. She is one of the college's photog she is a college photographer and graphic designer. And she actually did ask the question of how diverse was the college in those early years? Um, Vlad touched on it, but I'm sure do any of the other panelists want to take this one on your experiences either as a student or an employee? Well, Vlad was right on target there. Uh, when I came in in 78, the average age was 29. So that already gives you an insight into, you know, kind of how the college was run as opposed to when we were able to increase our younger students. We've had um, over that time, so many students who grow and as mentioned, are, were more diverse. All of that's added into the pot just to make us more of who we were. But we were very, very different. In fact, we were primarily returning women when I came, which was why I developed an interest and I wrote my PhD dissertation calculating the economic returns from higher education for re-entry women, because the re-entry women were very concerned about, will I be able to keep up? Uh, do I have enough information? And as it turns out, they were always wonderful, outstanding students. I would show them at the end of each semester how well they had done. So the climate has changed over the over the years and uh, for the better, just bringing in more young students, getting a lot of uh, student activities and those kinds of things constantly running. Uh, students now say that they feel more like it's a college. That's something that they started to say over the years. So that was very much on point. <laughs> thank you, Vlad, and thank you, Pam. I wanted to bring up a few more comments that our excited viewers in the audience have shared. I think so many of them are happy to, to uh, see you. So I'm just gonna run through these quickly because they're really just comments, but I, I really wanted you to, to hear from those audience members. So 
Janelle Broderick said, Vlad, Quint, it's so good to see you both. We miss you in the Horowitz Center. And Marie Westhaver, she chimed in and said, good to see you, Quint. And Charlotte Monroe typed in and said, hello, Vlad, Quint, yes. and Pam. Great to see you again. I'm oh, sure those bring yeah. back memories, hearing people's names, yes. um, all that. Uh, yeah, so good to hear that. I want to take it back to the earlys again. Um, this one came in from Tony Hoos, and this is, what are some of your memories of Dr. Smith and Jim Rouse? So for those of you either who interacted with mm -hmm. them or knew them personally, do you have anything to share? Dr. Smith was the first. Go ahead, Vlad. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, uh, Dr. Smith was the first president of the college, and he served from uh, 1969. Uh, he was hired before the college was built, and uh, he retired in 1981. Okay. Uh, the two things about him were that he was a visionary. Uh, he was totally student oriented and uh, whatever the latest pretty uh, practically proven procedures were in terms of student learning, uh, he adopted them. He had us go through training to learn how to uh, develop objectives, the processes that lead to the accomplishment of objectives, and so on. All right. Uh, uh, to to this day, many of the faculty who have been at the college for a long time practice these things. Okay. The other side of him was he was a stern taskmaster, and I don't mean this in a uh, denigrating way, but uh, uh, he was tough, and uh, he fought for the college. Uh, he, uh, he frankly rewarded faculty. We got uh, good salary increases uh, in, those, in those years, but we got good salary increases if we uh, did our job well. So uh, he laid the foundation and uh, the college stands uh, because of the foundation that he laid. I would like to Pam. add I'd like to add that Dr. Smith was very, extremely supportive of me in my recruitment efforts because, as I mentioned earlier, students were being sent to Catonsville. And so he just said, do whatever you want to do. He gave me budget <laughs> to make sure that happened so I could entertain the counselors and I could stay on top of the people at Board of Ed. And, do the things that I needed to do in order to increase enrollment. So actually, Dr. Smith and the board quite often visited my office just to see how I was doing and if it was anything, any way that they could support me in what I was trying to do. And they said, as long as I keep those numbers up, then they are behind me 100%. And I learned a lot from him in terms of... Um, Lad mentioned we had management by objectives, MBOs, which a lot of what I do today is actually based on those same kinds of principles. Thank you both. Um, I do have one final question I want to ask before I turn it back over to Brian. And I, this is one that everybody can answer. So I will start actually with Vlad and then maybe we can continue with Pam and and um, move from there. But this is from Jody Allaire in the president's office. And she asked, what is one special memory that you have of your years at the college that you will never forget? Well, of course, the one memory that always will stay with me is being in the classroom and as I, uh, I express it, mixing it up with the students, uh, the interactions, the dynamics, and so on and so forth. But if you're looking for an event, it has to be in 1995 
which was the 50th anniversary of the end of World War II. And uh, I, I had this idea that we should somehow or other have a commemorative type of a conference. And we had two conferences, one in May of 1995 and one in September. The one in May, we invited veterans of the European theater to come uh, where we would have uh, uh, guest speakers, but we'd also have panel discussions and so on and so forth. So we had uh, veterans who served in Europe during World War II, and they came together. Uh, what was one of the most uh, amazing moments was that uh, there were uh, two gentlemen, they had never met, they lived in Howard County, and one of them was uh, in the Army Air Force, and he uh, uh, served on a, a, a bomber that was uh, bombing the oil fields in a place called Ploesti. Another gentleman was a member of primarily a black squadron. I don't remember, uh, you know, uh, whether it was uh, uh, a member of the Tuskegee Airmen, okay? But that black squadron of fighters escorted the bombers. These two guys met, and it turns out that they flew in different airplanes together at the same time. And just seeing them meet and recognize one another was stunningly a wonderful case, all right? Uh, they, we were grateful to them for the service that they gave us. They were grateful to us for recognition. And the same thing happened in September when we invited veterans of the Pacific Theater. So basically we've got Navy, Marines, and Army and Army Air Corps. And again, uh, individuals met who knew about each other and so on. And uh, we were able to have a commemorative day that uh, was inspirational. You know, it's so hard to wrap 40 years down to like a specific event or so. Um, I have tremendously always enjoyed being in the classroom with students. And then for the last 20 years, working directly with the Craft Collegians program and just getting to know them on a very, very personal basis and running, which is like a college within a college. So I was able to be a part of every aspect uh, of students, anything that involves students. So that has always been um, such a wonderful, wonderful memory. There's also one that should be showing on a picture that reads May 1980. And I'll wait for that one, but that one was a special one too. Can I uh, we might add, be able add to... one little thing? Sure. Okay. Please do. Uh, I do remember being in the uh, hospital for uh, for a stay uh, time when I was ill, and uh, I always uh, would ask the nurses, "Are you an HCC graduate?" I remember doing that a number of times, even when I visited people in the hospital, and uh, it's been an always been a very positive response. Um, with the uh, really, they really were a great reflection of the uh, nursing program, which is still outstanding and uh, moving right along here at HCC. So I remember that uh, with the nursing students and the program, and Martha Matlick was, and Bernie Hallinan were uh, the, the early directors of the program. Perhaps we could throw up, we have an image, on a nursing image. Um, I know it might be going out of order. I don't know if that's possible, uh, but we have a color still. There we go. There it is. Yeah, that's Mon this Montgomery Hospital. Memories. Yeah, Montgomery Hospital, I think, um, where our the students on, did their clinicals. Yeah, different hospitals. The person on the right is Martha Matlick. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is from 1973, dated. 
yeah, I, I would guess that this is the early 70s. Or maybe. Um, yeah, I think so. Early 80s, maybe. Thank you for going out and of the, orders with that picture. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. The, the student on the left um, is one, I can't remember her name, but I remember her as a student. And then I ran into her uh, in the hospital maybe 20 years ago. And uh, yes, she, she was a student there and very successful. And um, it was great to run into somebody that I had personally known. It was really good. Very inspiring. Now in our slides, uh, I wanna come back to that uh, da uh, daily life question on campus. Uh, the previous slide is one of a band playing. If you could put that up, please. Thank you so much. Uh, so this goes back a little bit to the question, the last question that Beth asked, but um, there's so many enriching things always going on, camp going on, on campus. Um, at least in, since I've been here the past six years. Um, but there's always activities going on, and there are major events, and I, uh, that they're wonderful. But uh, there's a lot of daily life kind of stuff that went on too, you know, small bands, um, music, sports, uh, basketball. Uh, it was popular early on. Theater, when the theater was built. Uh, maybe if you could share uh, sort of one of your extracurricular favorite activities, you know, sort of daily life activities on campus with the, with the audience. And I'm gonna throw that to the panel in general. Well, yeah, for me, have, um, uh, the art was, was a very important um, aspect of HCC. I remember um, thinking of a, of, a, of a moment that was very uh, important to me. Um, putting on writing, directing, and putting on a, a theatrical piece, which uh, for the very first time, which was quite exciting for me. And it's funny, I, I went on to um, to study dance, not not as for 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 being a professional dancer, but just uh, for my own satisfaction, and um, actually got to know many professional dancers as a result, uh, particularly in ballet. And um, one friend in particular was talking about going to grad school and then uh, teaching dance. And when we caught up after he finished grad school, he said, oh, I'm going to be teaching at Howard Community College. He had no idea that I had, had lived in Columbia or went to HCC. And I said, what? And he said, yes, um, I'm going to be um, the, uh, I don't know what his title is, but basically um, I think heading the dance program, Darian Smith there. So it just goes to show you can uh, kind of what Quentin was saying, you can leave uh, HCC, but it's always with you. And it's amazing how you meet people who are connected, just like the couple that uh, that was spoken about earlier, who went on a vacation in Florida and met people from met another couple from Columbia. So that was very exciting for me to hear. Uh, just brief in brief, I didn't get to acknowledge the, uh, the credit that photo. Uh, that photo is Art Monroe leading jazz student jazz performance, Lower Nursing Lounge, 1983. I think they called that the fishbowl, from what I've been able to surmise. It's a beautiful photo. Um, music faculty. Art Art was a beloved uh, faculty member, and uh, had passed after some years. I'm, uh, I'm and, told that, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Vlad. And uh, one, of, one of the comments that was made earlier, uh, you know, John, John Bauman had, uh, you know, sent his, you know, uh, regards to us, but so did Charlotte Monroe. And uh, Charlotte Monroe is his widow. And she I believe she's in the audience tonight. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> I actually, we're coming close to the end here, but I think we have one more photo that we can throw up uh, onto the screen. And maybe someone can tell us who these people are. Uh, and this is from the HCC Campus Close-Up Television Show, 1983. It's Martha Grimm from Records and Registration and then somebody else. Who could that be? I think that's my grandson. 
<laughs> Anyone wondering, that is Vlad Marinich. <laughs> what were you talking about? Do you remember? Do you have any clue? I don't what remember what I had for breakfast, for goodness sakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't remember. It, 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 it must have been, I, I think, something having to do with either a program uh, that I was in, you know, involved in uh, or maybe a course. But uh, uh, no, I don't remember the specifics. <laughs> but one of the things that I should, I, I should comment that that photo also represents one of the uh, many things that the college was uh, into, you know, so not only, you know, uh, a, a band that Art Monroe created, but also we had a very, very active uh, TV studio. And, okay, very quickly, um, we had a uh, professor, uh, Doris Van Doren, who every semester would have a fashion show in the cafeteria. Absolutely. <laughs> I believe one of those um, images are available in the HCC 50th anniversary gallery show. Uh, so if you'd like to see there, I think there is a fashion show picture available in that. So good, good. we are at 658. I'd like to throw it now to Missy Maddie. And I'd like to personally thank all of you for participating. It's been wonderful. Some of you I see more often than others. I want to say that Vlad is one of the first people I met on campus. He happened to be on campus one of my first days of work and uh, has uh, always been uh, a great uh, person to help me uh, figure out historical uh, conundrums in the archives. Quint has also helped me quite a bit over the years, and I'd like to thank them. But I'd like to thank all of you very much uh, uh, just from me to you uh, for participating tonight. And thank you, Brian. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, thanks a lot, Brian. It's been great. Hey, as Brian mentioned, um, my name is Missy Maddie, and I'm the executive director of Howard Community College's Educational Foundation, uh, which is a nonprofit charitable organization that raises funds for student scholarships and programs. Uh, I want to thank Brian and Beth for moderating tonight's panel and, and bringing those questions forth. Uh, and, and also for the questions from the audience, they were great. Uh, I also want to personally thank our panelists, Pam Cornell, Janella Garrett, Quentin Cardos, and Vlad Marinich, some of the, which I have worked with for many, many years before their retirement. Uh, and thank them for joining us in this conversation spanning five decades of Howard Community College educating our community. Uh, it's pretty unbelievable, but it's been an amazing five decades. Um, I would also like to thank everyone in the audience tonight for joining us um, and helping us celebrate HCC's milestone 50th anniversary. Um, and just uh, some reminders to our alumni, don't forget, as uh, Stephen Hollis said, once a dragon, always a dragon. Thank you for growing with us. If you're not part of our alumni association, please consider becoming a member by visiting uh, www.howardcc.edu slash alumni. To our retirees in the audience, the foundation has several special and fun fundraising events throughout the year. So I hope you'll continue to join us as you did when you were employees. And um, I hope everyone will keep in touch with us by following us on Facebook at Support HCC or by emailing us at foundation at howardcc.edu. Good night, everyone, and don't forget you can get there from here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.